day everyone welcome to pay it forward today i've got a new project for you it is a free pattern and you can download your free pattern templates to create this one along with me now this is a little needle book i've made and designed several of these this one is a little owl with made up in fabrics and felt really really simple and this time of the year is great for uh, making up little gifts like this and many of you are part of sewing circles and it really does make the perfect gift for a fellow sewist. So open it up and have a look inside and we've got beautiful pop of colour, little embellishments there that I'm going to show you how to do and again always a little surprise there's a beautiful little mouse tucked in a pocket there. I know your friends and family will love these. So you just need to find the link which is in the description box below to find your free pattern templates and you can print those out on your home printer. Have a look also in the description box you'll see that there is um, a, you know some hints and tips for printing. Do have a look at those. Also I include a measuring bar on all of my pattern pages so that will make sure that you're getting them the right size. So any problems with printing, talk to me in the comments and we will help you out. So let's get started at having a look at what we're going to need to put this little one together. So let's have a look at what we're going to need to put together a beautiful owl needle book. So the way I make these up is they're made up out of what I call felt fabric. So the front cover and the inside cover are a print. Now, the way I make felt fabric is I just fuse a piece of felt, a rectangular felt, together with a piece of print fabric using fusible webbing. And then I cut out my shape. And what you get is a beautiful non-fray edge and you've got the volume of the felt and you get the benefit of the print as well. So this is the outside cover of mine that I've chosen. And what you want for the inside cover it's really important. These are absolute little treasures. You want it to be that when you open up that inside of the needle book, that it's absolutely a pop of excitement and color. So this is a perfect print for the outside. Now, I'm gonna start by showing you what we're going to add to the front cover. So we have a little owl face and that's made up in a few pieces. So we've got the underside part, which is the, the full hood of the owl. It sits at the side here, and that is cut from felt and fusible webbing. And then we have the top part of the head, so that's a contrasting color again, which leaves the little neckline feathering of the owl. And then we have the two eye pieces for the eye mask, these are cut from double felt, it's important. These are cut just from double felt, two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. When you do that, always join together a little square or rectangle big enough to accommodate your two pieces and then cut your shapes out. Don't try and cut out your shapes and then join two shapes together. You'll ne never get it nice and clean. The thing with these needle books is exactly that, that you want them to be lovely and clean. So our lovely owl with his eye pieces on there and then he has one eye that is open now this is cut from felt plus fusible web this one is half open and he has an eyelid also cut from felt with fusible web that sits over the eye like that a button will be tucked up in there and the eye lid will sit just over it to make him look a little bit sleepy. On the other side, you have just your eyepiece cut out in the same color as you have that eyelid, because if it's shut, it will be the same color as that. And we will be stitching a line across to indicate that eye is closed. You can make them both open, totally up to you. And I do like to use for the beak, a little heart button. So that just works really well. For the wing, we've got the wing that's tucking in around here. These two pieces, wing pieces, are cut from double felt. You can see that I've cut them from the same piece of double felt, but I'm using on one side purple, one side green, and then I can swap the colors out like that. So that's going to be how that one looks. And the way the whole thing looks when it's closed, of course, 
is a little owl with his wing at the side. Super cute when you open it up, it's a full heart shape. So that's the outside. The inside is where all of the fun happens. We are going to have a scissor pocket. Sorry, it's on that side. We're gonna have a little scissor pocket there that's gonna go in there. We are going to have a needle keep, which is pure wool felt here. Now the scissor keep, I've cut mine from the same felt fabric, a different print. You can make yours in double felt if you like. I've got my needle, my actual needle keep. This is pure wool felt, so the needles go through it easier. That's going to be tucked in at the side here. Then inside our little needle keep on this section, we're going to have another little pocket, which is a heart cut from double felt. Again, bringing in my colors coordinating. And then we're going to make a tiny little mouse that sits in that pocket, because I always associate mice and owls together, but I always make them friends, which is probably not what they are. So this little body piece is cut from double felt. My mouse is white. And then we have two head pieces of our little mouse and they are cut from felt with fusible webbing. Now all of these details are on your pattern pieces. So don't worry if you're not remembering, but basically the body will tuck into that pocket and this is what we'll see poking out over the top, our little mouse face. We're gonna add a little tail down, two tiny little ear pieces that will be pressed into place to really show up the shape of those ears and we will stitch simple eyes, nose and mouth on there. You can embellish all of these areas with buttons, which is certainly what I'm going to do. They also allow, if you add a button on the inside anywhere, you can tie different things onto it, little charms and so on. We close that over, we'll be stitching that over so little mouse is hidden in there, which is really cute. So I will be adding a little sun to mine at the top here. So the scissors will tuck in here and then I will add a little sun at the top. This one, this felt piece is cut from felt with fusible webbing, which will be pressed on. Then I have a tiny circle of fusible foam and that's gonna provide a nice little cushion bed for my top piece and I'm gonna be stitching this down and we'll have a nice little padded area to tuck in special pins, needles, and so on. You can embellish throughout with all sorts of different buttons and things on this needle keep, oh, sorry, on the scissor keep here. I'm going to be adding that piece of lace strategically in a way that then I can then tuck things through these holes and they can drop down as well. Again, um, embellish this section any way you like. I'll be adding a, a little row of tiny little buttons. Um, you can always add little extra pieces of felt that you can use as pin or needle keeps. And that's about it. We do need a support for each side of our book and it needs to be quite firm. Now, normally I would use mat board. So I don't have any mat board at the moment. So my the alternative is stiffened felt. This is actually two pieces of stiffened felt joined together with fusible webbing. And then I've cut my two pieces out from that. This is really, really stable. It's great stuff if you can find it. You can find it in you know your local craft store, Michael's, Spotlight, Lincraft. Very, very handy for this sort of thing. Um, you do want the little book to be nice and firm and crisp. You don't want it to be all floppy. Um, they, they need to be, to hold themselves well and makes it much easier to work with them as well. On the outside cover, we will have a nice big button to join that wing on. And also that will be the attachment to close the little needle book and there'll be one on the back cover as well. They don't have to be matching. I just happen to have two the same. We will need our embroidery thread or our pearl thread. I use an eight ply pearl thread throughout. So that's about all you'll need. You'll definitely need clear craft glue. 
and your usual sewing notions. So let's get busy, let's get started with the front cover. So the first thing we're going to do with our little needle book is we are going to start on the front cover. I've taken the backing paper off of my first piece to go on. So this is the underside of the head. Now you'll find that the top curve here of this piece will line up perfectly with the top curve of the heart. Just rotate it until you see that perfect fit. Go ahead and press that one on with a hot iron and a protective cloth. And then you do the same with this piece. Take the backing paper off and do them one at a time. Pop that one on and do the same thing. Rotate it, line it up perfectly. It needs to sit flush with the outside edge there and we'll get that one pressed into place. Then I'm going to take it to my machine and I am going to sew with a very close little zigzag satin stitch along the bottom line of this piece and the bottom line of this piece. We don't do anything to the top edge because we do that when we put the whole thing together with a blanket stitch. So for now, it's just these two lower edges. Just have a little practice first on a little scrap piece of felt to get your width of your stitch right. I generally set mine to around about a three or a 3.5 and pull that stitch length right down so that we get a lovely tight satin stitch. You can choose to coordinate your thread or contrast it to make it stand out. On this section, I will be blending thread color, keeping it the same. I might do a slightly deeper green on the lower edge of this one just to really mark that out. So let me get those pressed into place, stitched into place. You can also hand stitch with a blanket applique stitch, totally up to you. I really like the clean look of the machine stitching though. There we go. I hope you can see that stitching really nice and clean and tidy. So now we're gonna move on to the eye patches and they actually sit the curved section, the tucked under section goes to the lower edge of the eye and you need to get these in the right position. So get your little beak section ready, you get your little beak and pop it in there and make sure you're getting it into the right spot. But what we want to do first, we actually need to add the eye pieces before we're going to sew these in place. These actually get sewn into place um, once all the eye detailing is done. So what you want to do is have it there on your owl so that you can see that you're getting those little eye pieces all nice and even. So they should be sitting just, it's almost, it's probably about seven millimeters from the edge, but you want them to be on the same angle. Check with your button, which will be stitched on and you're gonna add that little eye lid so just make sure that everything's where it should be. The beak should just sit over that little V section. Just poke over it, it's a perfect spot for it. So what I'm gonna do is get these two eye pieces pressed into place and I'm going to machine stitch around those in the appropriate colors. I'm gonna match the colors on both of them. So now our next step, once we have those eye pieces pressed and stitched into place, I might also show you that on the top edge of this one, I'm going to have the little eyelid. So I didn't stitch all the way around. You can, but you're only gonna to have to stitch over it anyway. So I've just left that off. So what I'm gonna do now is I want to blanket stitch the entire outside edge because these parts are going to be sitting out from the needle book. So I am going to start down the bottom I'm doing mine with my extra strong thread. So I've got a single strand. I'm coming in from the underneath. You can see I've just come in between the layers of the felt. And I'm just going to start with a very small blanket stitch for a really neat edge. I've just chosen a neutral sort of a warm color to really frame up that eye piece nicely. I'm going through all the layers, bring my needle out through the loop each time 
and that gives me that beautiful tiny blanket stitch and it gives it a lovely finish and it stops those edges from buffing up and getting any sort of a wear over time. It's a great binding stitch. You can use your pearl thread if you like. I just, for this section, I like to use my extra strong thread. I often use it for my fine blanket stitch work. So you can see that's just gonna continue on. I'm gonna do that all the way around that piece and that one. Now, once I've done those, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same with my wing pieces, which are also double felt. So on the green wing piece, I'm going to be sewing with the purple thread and on the purple one with a deep green thread, or you could do it the other way around if you like. And in fact, I'll, I'll check it out and I'll see what I think when I get to there. So I'm gonna get those all stitched up and ready. So that has my pattern pieces all stitched with that beautiful blanket stitching. You can see what a lovely finish it is and it will really prolong the life of your little needle book with all that handling. So done the same with the eyes there. So what we're gonna do now is I've added a little bit of that visible webbing to the back of each eye, just on the lower side, because I want to be able to press them into place. You can just do this with a little bit of clear craft glue if you like, I just prefer to press them on. So again, you need to line them up, check on your beak position so that you're getting it right. Make sure that everything's lined up, press those into place, and then we're going to sew on the eye pupil there and the little eyelid cover, and we're gonna do a little closed eye across here. So just make sure that when you're adding this little piece, this is really just to connect them so that we can do a little bit of stitching the eye and so on. It's not really to adhere them because sewing on the button is gonna keep this piece on there and sewing on the little closed eye stitching is gonna keep this piece on there too. What you don't want is that you don't have access to that edge because we're going to be sewing a blanket stitch all around that edge. So don't glue it or press it all the way to the edge on both sides. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to sew that eye button in place. And I'm going to do that with my extra strong thread in black. We really want to give that a kind of a pupil there. If you're using a two button eye, I like to put it lengthwise rather than across. It looks better if it's lengthwise. If you're using a four button eye, of course you'll do a little cross, that'll look good with that little cover on it as well. So once you stitch that one in place, you can go ahead and add the eyelid, which will just fold over nicely. You can stitch that on with uh, on the machine if you like, just as we did the other pieces, or you can do it by hand with a blanket applique stitch. And you can use a tiny little bit of clear craft glue to position it first if that makes it easier for you. Um, and then we're going to draw, I will take my ruler and I will draw with a heat erasable marker a little line across here to match the angle of whatever you've done with that eyelid there. So just mirror that on the opposite side, draw that in and I will stitch that in in black thread on my machine. I'll go through all of those layers and that will give it that little closed eye look. There you go, that sweet little owl face. You can see just a little blanket applique stitch over that eyelid there and the straight, I went three times on my machine in black for that closed eye. I stitched the beak into place and now just fold it over and you can see what the book will look like when it is closed. And then we're going to just find the position to add our wing, which we're going to do just with that button. We're going to sew that on now so we don't have anything showing. So the button will be sewn through all of those layers, which will hold it there in place. And what you don't want is that anything there is joined because again, we're joining two pieces together. We're going to be sewing around the entire outside piece. That's why we don't fuse it into place. And it's actually nice if you sew it on with a button, it's got a little bit of mobility there. So I like to sit mine, it will cover the 
that little neckline just a little bit. I like to sit mine just down a little and have it just extend a little bit from that edge and the little end here, just slightly covering that centre line there. So that's where I'll sew mine into place. Get that stitched nicely into place and then we'll get started on the inside cover. Let's now have a look at our inside cover. So this will be a little fold over of our needle pin keep um, with that lovely pure wool felt. That will be folded over. Our little heart pocket's going to be in there, of course, with our, our tiny mouse will be poking out of there. First up, we're gonna get our little scissor keep put in place. So we're gonna move this one out the way and we're gonna have the little sun. You might wanna add the little sun. It's like a little pin keep up there at the top. I'm gonna to get this one first into position. So let's move everything else out of the way. Now I really want to line it up. Remember that we've got a centre line, centre seam coming down here that we will be stitching in. So you've got to angle that so that's not going to interfere with that. So just tucked in here, not too close to the edge because you're going to be doing some blanket stitching there when we put it all together. And I'm going to sew on my little piece of lace there and I'll be tucking it around the edge so that that will be another feature where we can add some little pins and hang things from that as well. So I'm simply going to stitch around that whole piece. Now you can do that in whatever way you prefer. You can do it with a, like we did before, with a zigzag stitch, a close satin stitch, which is probably what I'll do, or you can do it with a straight stitch. And remember that I'm using felt fabric, but you might be using double felt um, and that's fine. So there won't be any fraying, so you can just do a straight stitch. I'll see what I think about that when I take it to the machine. And also I'll probably just do a little stitch across the top line before I do that. So that lace will be incorporated. So let me get that first little scissor keep in place. Okay, so that has my little scissor keep stitched into place. Before I sewed that on, I added those three little colored buttons. Just any kind of extra detailing is lovely. And it always gives you something to clip something on to hang something from in your needle case. Now, of course, this layout can be changed up any way that suits you. I'm just giving you a general idea. The main thing you have to remember is that you've got a center line straight down the middle where this is going to fold over. So you don't want to put anything too close to the middle, either side. And also remember, you've got about a five millimeter seam all the way around to sew your blanket stitch when we actually put the back and the front together. So don't put any of your detailing too close to the edges. So my next step is to add my little sun, which I'm going to put up the top here, remembering that five millimeter seam allowance. This piece of felt has fusible webbing applied to the back, so I can press that straight on there. And I'm gonna get that stitched into place. Again, you can use a straight stitch, a zigzag, whatever you like, or you can hand stitch it in place. I'm just gonna sew a straight stitch right the way around this one. I've just sewn that straight stitch all around my little sun shape. And then I've taken a little bit of clear craft glue and just popped that little filler the little foam filler right in the center. You can press it on, but I find it easier. Just a little bit of craft glue will do it. And then we have our felt, plain felt cover that's going to go over the top. And all I'm going to do with this one is come in from the underneath, position that exactly over the top. And I'm going to come in from underneath right on that edge. And I'm going to sew a stab back stitch right the way around that's going to pull that down. You can see how that's going to pull that in. It's just going to travel around from the underneath. Each time going back into that last exit hole. And I'll have a nice perfect line of stitching. This is my extra strong thread that I'm using 
you can go ahead and sew this one on the machine but I just think it, this one does just frame it up nicely and you'll get that lovely little cushion look at the top so just continue on till you meet up with the other side so there we go my little sun in place and you can see that's created a beautiful little cushion pad to be able to add some pins or needles so now we're going to move over to the other side and I am adding my little fold over heart which provides space for your needles pins whatever you like in that nice soft I'm using a pure wool felt for this piece what I've done is drawn a line straight down the center with my heat erasable marker and I've positioned this on my piece checking the fold over here and remembering again that center line so here's my center line it needs to be far enough away that it doesn't interfere with that and I've just angled it off slightly so what I'm going to do now is just stitch that into place and then I'm going to continue on around that edge and you'll notice that this piece I've cut out with my pinking shears you don't have to do that if you don't have pinking shears not a problem but it is a really nice simple edge and it's a very classic look for inside a needle case so that's exactly what I'll do get that stitched and around this side of the heart so that's nicely secured so there we go once you have got that one stitched into place I can go ahead and take it to the ironing board and press that folded over like that now you can do a little tiny cover top stitch if you want but I find that if you press it and remember that this is going to be predominantly closed it's going to keep it nice and flat anyway so now we just have to go ahead and add a little pocket ready for our mouse and I have gone ahead and sewn that blanket stitch all the way around the outside of that one first just as I did with the wings and just in a coordinating thread or a contrasting whatever you want whatever works with your project and remember our positioning of this one you need to leave room for little mouse's head to peek out the top so just about here try and angle the point down to the point in a nice lined up way and all I will do is just stitch around from about here I'll just stitch and line up that blanket stitching edge right to the other side and then we will be ready to start putting our back and front cover together so that completes the inside of our needle book cover you can see there I've just stitched that one on left the opening at the top ready for a little mouse to tuck in there I've tied on an extra little heart button just bringing in that brown color again and keeping with that whole heart theme I've added a few buttons there we can tie all sorts of bits and pieces to those um, again embellish this any way you like so this is all done except for our mouse we will make him last so now I've drawn a line with my heat erasable marker straight down the center from this point here to the point of the heart I've done the same on the back of the front cover so what I'm going to do now is just take my clear craft glue I don't know if you can see that line it's very dark and I'm just going to just put some glue either side of that line I'm not putting it on the line because I'm going to be stitching there I don't want to be sewing through glue particularly just a line either side it's going to make it much easier for us to sew that accurately so I'm remembering that we've got the pretty sides facing outwards on both of them so we're putting wrong sides together in this case line up those points and that divot at the top of the heart very easy to do because it's a heart shape and you want to make sure that all of your edges are basically lined up you can always trim it a little but we want to now press that into place and let that dry for a couple of minutes and then we're going to go ahead and sew exactly on that line that I've drawn and I'm going to sew that two times and that will anchor that center point and it makes it much easier for that little book to fold over in half I now have that central seam stitched into place you can see back and front stitched together there 
and also make sure that you add on the front cover which also folds around to the back make sure that you add a button on the other side as well because that's how we're going to put this one together it's how we're going to do it up so just make sure that it's lined up check it by folding it over and checking that get that one stitched into place and so now we're going to add our filler supports I've already done this one here where I've glued it in. I'll show you on this side. So we open that up. I've got my filler piece, which for me is um, my stiffened felt. And you may be using matte board. Matte board would be my best choice. And I have glued it all up liberally. I'm pushing that in up against that center line there nice and close make sure you're leaving room all the way around because you've got to do that stitching and press that down nice and flat flip it over make sure you're getting that nice and sealed and then you go ahead again with your clear craft glue and liberally glue up that whole area and around the edge and glue that piece down make sure that all of those edges are adhered and then we do the same with this side and then we want to set that aside to dry absolutely completely before we come back and do that stitching. My little needle book is all dry now that glue is all dry and we are ready to go ahead and sew our blanket stitch around the entire outside edge. I'm using an eight ply pearl thread in a colour that matches both sides something that coordinates both sides or you can use something that just contrasts with both sides if you can't find a perfect match. So that completes my stitching all the way around the outside of that needle book and you can see it's just given a, a beautiful neat and professional finish. I have then just tied a doubled strand of my pearl thread. I've mixed two colours around that first button. I've knotted it twice and then I've knotted the end together because what we've got there then is a really simple way to close that little needle book. Perfect little fastening. So our final thing is to go ahead and make our little mouse to sit in that pocket. So let's get started with the body. So with the body First thing you're going to do is just blanket stitch the edge. I used my extra strong thread, my Gudeman thread, and it is just to seal those edges. That's the part that will slip down into that pocket. And then we take our head pieces. Now you need to leave the paper on when you go ahead and press on with your hot iron and protective cloth, you press on those little ear pieces. And it's so very tiny that I don't even stitch them into place. Press them on nice and firm and you'll find you don't have to uh, do any stitching there at all. Um, and it is just going to sit in there as an accessory. So it's not like it will be handled. So once you've done that, then you can remove that backing paper. Which so there we go. So we've got the front of the head with those ears on. We sew in the mouth, nose and mouth after we've just completed the head. So I have wrong sides together in this case and we're using our fusible webbing on this one. It's just for strength. It's not for actually fusing together. So I'm going to open that up. Now the section we're going to be sewing is from the base of each ear. So base of the ear, round the chin line and finish at the other side. So I'm going to come in from the underneath. I've got a knot in the end and I'm going to sew the tiniest little blanket stitch. Because we're not going to turn this through, we are going to add a tiny bit of stuffing. And you can see how small those stitches are. They're no more than two millimetres. Smaller if you can. And because you've got that fusible webbing on the back, it's still going to hold together. Coming through the loop each time, same blanket stitches we've used throughout. I'm going to stitch right around to the base of the other ear and then I'm going to leave my needle and thread on. 
So there we go. Next, we're going to add a tiny little bit of stuffing. Still got that needle left on there. I will use my tiny, tiny forceps to do this. And just to tuck a little bit, it's just to plump out that head just a little bit. And you can use your wool felting needle if you have one, just to help you tuck that in. Just gives us a little bit of volume so when we add some eyes, there's something for them to sink into. Tucking that in, holding it with my thumb. And then my felting needle will help me do that. I can tuck in those fibres there. So just enough, just a little bit of plumpness there. So next step is to take our clear craft glue and I'm just going to add a little bit on the back of the back here, each side, and then I'm going to seal just those ears together. We're going to put a little clip on them, if you like, to hold them while they're drying. Then we're going to come back and we're going to continue on with our blanket stitching around each ear across the top of the head and finish off. I've now gone ahead and closed the top of that head and that's all ready to go. So I have made two little marks for the eyes just with my pen. Just two little marks there. Make sure they're sort of halfway across the head. Line them up with the base of the ears is the best spot and not too close together. And I'm going to first stitch in just a little cross right at the bottom here for a nose and a mouth. Now you can mark it in if you like. I'm just going to go by sight. I've got a single strand of a rust sort of a brown. Remembering that my mouse is white, you might be making a different colour. And I do want this to sit quite low. So just coming in from behind. Taking that cross over. Cross to the other side. And then I'm going to bring that up. Make that finishing little corner of the nose and take it straight out the back of the head. Pull that in so I've got a nice finished little crossover nose and mouth. So now I'm ready to add the eyes. I'm using two little seed beads for my eyes. You could just do a little French knot if you like, whatever suits you, or even just a little sleepy eye. One stitch across. It's all done the same way in that you come in from behind with your thread. Now I am just using a double strand of normal machine thread so that it's nice and small to pass through that needle. Come in from behind right at one of those marks that I've made. For the eyes, slip that bead on and then I'm going to dive back in, not in exactly the same spot, just next to it. I'm going to come out through the back of the head again because I really, really want to anchor in that first eye. And then I'm going to do the same with the other one. Come back in again take it through the bead and at the back and then knot that off at the back. There we go. And now we just need to add that head to the body, which is super simple. I'm taking a single strand of extra strong thread in a matching color. You want to estimate where that head is going to sit. It's at the top is the pointy end. So the little head's just gonna sit like this. We're just going to start by going through the back 
of our body all the way through. Leave my tail ends hanging and I'm going to estimate just where that will sit at the back of the head. I'm taking a nice big stitch across. Then I'm going to go back in. Just like you would a button. Pull that through. We should have that little head nicely perched on that body. Just like that and you can knot that off three or four times before you snip those thread ends. If you've got it in the wrong place it's nothing to pull it out and reposition it. So that body will just slip into that pocket with that chin sitting over the edge. So here we have our completed little needle book. Now very simple fastening with that button and that thread there. Gorgeous little front cover. Can't wait to see the colours you're all going to use. And open that up and bam, there's that gorgeous pop of colour inside. And we've got our needle keep. I've tucked my little embroidery scissors in there. And we've got our little pin keep at the top. Of course, you can change that up inside, as I've said. All the little button embellishments really give you a good anchoring point for hanging any other little details and bits and pieces. Of course, your actual needle keep with that lovely soft felt. Perfect, open it up and you've got the sweetest little mouse tucked in there. I just absolutely love this design and I do have others. So let me show you the others if you've enjoyed making this one. I have a little house, a little cottage. Again, same closing, fastening, open it up and pow, again, absolutely delicious. You can add a little tag. Have a look at my other patterns of these because you can intermix some of these pieces. Um, like I said, you can add a little charm, something like this is beautiful. Then we've got the little caravan, little camper. This is one of my favorites. Again, open it up, super exciting inside. A little charm there again. And then we have a little puppy kennel. Super cute, little charm tucked in there. Perfect for gift giving. So that's what I thought I would do for you this month. I know that a lot of you are looking for quick and easy gifts and this is a perfect gift for a sewist. So thank you all for joining me in making this one up. I wonder how many of you have gone that far back in my videos and found the others and have made them all up. If you've made up the others, you've got to add this one to the collection for sure. I hope that you pay it forward by giving them out as gifts. That's my whole message here. Um, or certainly they would make great craft fair projects for you to on sell. You're very welcome to sell any product that you make with my patterns. You just can't sell the pattern itself, but I wish you well with that. It's my way of paying it forward to all of you. So how is everyone? You're busy. Everyone's busy this time of the year. I'm absolutely overwhelmed by the robots. I'm just, it's my favorite project for sure. And you have all translated him and her absolutely beautifully. I'm loving it. Keep them coming, be brave and embellish them and that's what you're doing everybody's putting their own spin on it and I would like to I'm going to be putting up a notice on my on our Facebook page I want everyone to share their robots on the same post because I would like to do an Instagram post on my Instagram um, of all of your robots so everybody get them done and finished I'll be putting up that notice on our Facebook page. So if you're not following our Facebook page, why not come along? You'll see what everybody else is doing. We're all very encouraging there. If you really wanna to chat to me, chat to me on Instagram. That's the best way to find me. And uh, you can ask me anything there. Love seeing what you're all doing too. Put things right under my nose if you want me to see it. But uh, certainly really, really thrilled with the results of November Masterclass. So I hope you'll enjoy doing this one. I hope it's a little quick and easy project for you all in your busy times. I hope you all have a fantastic creative week. Keep on paying all of those good things forward. And until next time, it is Huru from me.